डियर व्यूवर्स एज यूजल अंकल के लाइव टी वी एंड रेडियो ब्रिंग्स यू इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक्स एंड मेक्स यू मीट पीपल हु आर नॉट नॉर्मली सीन इन दुबई ऑन द स्ट्रीट्स इन द पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड इवन इन ऑफिस लाइक माइंड आई एम लकी टूडे दैट मिस आसमा निसार is here with me <laughs> sorry if i'm laughing because i was getting confused by her name so now it is clear it is ms asma nisar and she has been kind enough to give us a few minutes of her time she is very busy because this time she is here to stay that's what she plans she has been here before many times but she only came for sightseeing and visiting her relatives but this time luckily i think something attracted her about dubai that she wants to make it her home so welcome ms uh, asma and Thank you. Uh, this is a very small office and uh, i'm sure that what when you want to stay here you are also going to look for a job you're going to start that process of writing cvs hunting people and using you know the word they call vasta <laughs> and the people who know you people who know us and waiting for the cv replies and as many people will suggest to you go to these recruitment companies uh, under the table or indirectly they may ask you for money but normally it is not allowed it's not legal for these recruitment companies to charge you so whatever the situation is for, for one applicant the ratio here is 1000 cvs so to finding a job you must really be top notch in whatever profession you profess to be good at and you your profession as i know you and uh, i would like my viewers also to know that you are a principal in a in a, what is that a college a school high school or it's what it's a british curriculum school okay uh, and it it offers o levels and a level classes okay alongside there are metric stream classes the metric stream is the uh, education system of pakistan okay so uh, it would be something like the curriculum in india also they something have like, it. like it's it's yeah. 10th standard and then later on you go into college for 12th standard okay 11 and 12 so it's the school that i worked for is uh, is a branch school like we can house and city school it's called bloomfield hall i'm sorry what the name of the school you said the bloomfield hall bloomfield hall okay right. and uh, the branch that i was wor- working in i was the head of the branch it had o level classes as well as a level classes and alongside we were catering to the pakistani education system as well and we were affiliated with the federal board okay. of education okay. and that meant that we had the regular 10th standard of a pakistani education system okay uh, you don't mind i call you asma because no that's the way i usually work no okay asma when i said uh, you were the principal that means you were running that organization all alone on your own shoulders the branch that i was in charge of the yeah. principal of yes but it was it's part of a system which has many branches in different cities all right what i meant sorry if i'm interrupting you uh keeping the the i would not say the word script but the policy of the uh, organization the decision making was yours how yes. you ran your branch yes. they were only concerned with the results yes uh, there are general rules okay uh, that were followed okay there is a system it is uh, there is a hierarchy there and all that uh, but the branch that i run was usually i had to take all the decisions day to day decisions were mine and if there were things to be introduced in consultation with my regional director i was the man managing them okay that's so day to day running was all mine okay i am coming to a very maybe it may i mean it may be a little bit embarrassing for you to answer that you can just deny you, you can just refuse to answer okay. that's because that part is what any potential in employers in dubai would be trying to target when they interview sure. you 
being in Pakistan and in India, I know the way things work there. You know, there are big states, rich people, industrialists. They expect a different treatment for their sons and daughters. And then there may be the army people, the professional cadre, you know, and the custom officers and maybe related to the president or the prime minister and all. And then there would be people whose fathers may just be what is the lowest level in the government, I mean, officer, cadre, I don't know. But uh, say a cler clerical mm -hmm. person, even their children could come there if they could afford that fees, maybe, you know, if they have a likely candidate, most of the relatives try to support that yes. person. So how would you, what would you do with those people all together? Actually, the branch that we were running, uh, or the school basically that I work for, it was open for everyone. Okay. And uh, we, um, anybody could seek admission if they could afford the fee of course, and all that. Of course. Yeah. And to help out, we had some concession policies as well okay. for people who maybe could not afford the full fee. So there were different categories in, of concession. Also, there was a compassionate or a sympathetic uh, concession as well that if someone, you know, there was a divorced parent or a single parent or someone's father or mother might have died or, you know, uh, we were there to help them out as well. So anybody who could afford it, it was open, for, the admission was open. That's right. It is good to hear that. But my question was in a different stance. Uh, what was the treatment meted out to them? They were giving the exams. and. Were all treated as equal or were you looking at the background of the student um, and all? We, while giving admission, basically there's, there was an admission test involved at the beginning uh, of the admission. Whenever a parent comes, there's an admission test. We look for the merit. We, there is a policy that, you know, at least a child must score a certain percentage to be considered for admission. We do, cons we do look at the background. However, while getting admission, that doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, we, we would like to give admissions on basis of merit. Uh, but we were willing to work with children, even if they were not able to score really high on the admission tests, we were ready to help the parents out by providing extra help in education. Uh, treatment, as far as I can remember, or as far as I have worked, the policies that we had were equal for all. Uh, parents sometimes did want special treatment uh, like on on the reason, um, on the basis of their own background they may demand it but generally our policy was same for everyone that all children should get the same sort of treatment um, there should not be any bias school policy was that there should not be any bias in any sort I'm, I'm glad, I'm comfortable when you tell me this thing because that was one worry I was thinking that of course uh, knowing my country, Pakistan, back home, although it's a long time, but these things do happen there. Yes. So they that do. was one worry. So when you said merit, okay, that was okay. And you were frank enough to tell us that some parents may expect. They do. And you cannot do without it because you, being a financial institution, you need to be supported. And some of these parents, they do donations and those uh, things. That no. also has to be looked after. Yes, but the yeah. this uh, school I work for, we, di we didn't work on donations. Okay, okay. It was, uh, there's an admission process. If you can complete it, uh, your family can support you. Anybody can support you. you as okay. long as you complete that, it doesn't make a difference how much you earn or whether... We do look at uh, the financial background because we'd like to know if the next fee is going to be paid or not. Because there are sometimes parents who may go through an admission process and may not complete it later on because they refuse to pay or then their fee is pending and things like that. So it's difficult for a school system to go after parents and demand the pending out or outstanding fees. So that would, that, for that, we would look at the uh, financial background. However, it didn't make a difference much of a difference regarding admissions. Okay, uh, Asma, now the second part comes is uh, your, you as a principal, if it's a, you know, they say the best education a child gets is amongst its own family, a mother and father and all. You as a principal, were, did you ever, ever 
get those maternal feelings out to treat these people as your own children, these boys and girls. I don't know if it was uh, just a boys school or a girl. It's a co-education. Co-education, okay. Co so all these, did you ever have a feeling for them? And suppose one of those boys really surpassed and surprised you with their results. Didn't you get that feeling of pride that yes, I this... Did. All the time. I, I think I the reason I was able to stay there for so long was because I felt they were all my children. Where every time I referred to them, I always referred to them as my children. So, you know, that confuses a lot of people as well because they think they're all like I have a lot of children. But uh, they, I worked with all, all of them and we try to give uh, a feeling of individual attention all the time. And uh, it was... I think the maternal feelings are inborn. They always come out when you see those kids looking at small children's faces and their smiling faces, you know, the compassion comes out and you feel like smiling. I think if I was ever a bit down or depressed, I would go to my preschool and see the smiling faces and it would lift me up. So I think that was there. That's very well said. And uh, I have students who are now in professional fields. They once, once they become doctors or engineers or bankers they are out in the field because I was I have been teaching for 15 years and that's a long time so I have a lot of students who are now who have also completed professional education so when they come back or they come to meet me or they give me a call or they meet me on Facebook um, you know when their achievements look or feel like my achievements it feels like you know I've done that for them Correct. so I was part of their life that's the I mean that's the benefit of education you know that uh, you follow up your students yes. and the respect which you get you don't get in any other profession. True. The reward is yeah. uh, the teaching reward comes when your children come back and they do. Um, they I've, do well in I've the world. I talk yeah. to people and many times because the world is changing really fast and they say that you know there's no respect in teaching or you know, there's no reward. I think uh, for a good teacher, there is a reward. The, t the children always remember you and they come back. They do Perfect. come back. It could be a, s a message on the phone. It could be a message on Facebook. It could be, you know, a hi. Maybe when they're near the school, they just may drop in to say hello. That happens. I'll give you an example. Just, uh, I think I'll, be, I'll take only three minutes more sure. and we will wind this up. I'll give you a very ex good example of what you are in for and what does this profession take you to? Do you know, we, we just mentioned that Varke organization took over that Westminster and what is Varke group? They have these gems and Varke, how did they start? How did they go into so many branches of schools and all? Varke, the son, the guy who is running the place, son. his mother. This is Varke. Mrs. Varki was a teacher of Sheikh Muhammad. Mm. As a teacher, she was rewarded by Sheikh Muhammad to open schools. Wow. See, the reward that you get back from that. Mm. So, that was an example. Now, one question is still lingering here. When sure. you said, uh, we also provide extra attention to people who need more education, I mean, who need guidance in education. What did you mean by that? Was that on tuitions? Would you send, tell them to come late in the evening, provide them extra classes or would some teacher go and charge them for that tuition? Uh, it was actually, um, it was uh, in preschool specifically. When a child comes from, because we had children who would be from villages as well, uh, some from completely uh, like Punjabi speaking background and all that. So bringing them on to an English or a British curriculum system, it was sometimes difficult. So our teachers were guided and counseled so that they would, you know, provide extra time within class or, you know, sit with the children uh, in their free time and help them out. That could be arranged within school time or if a child, uh, you know, the transportation was late or they were going to go late, we could uh, keep the child after school for some time. Um, and work with the child uh, but all permission had to be done through the parents it couldn't be done without these were not charged these were within the fee that we were charging it was not there was no extra charge for this if a parent seeked private tuition 
uh, initial uh, the first thing is that the school discourages private tuitions however there is a tuition culture and parents do approach teachers for tuition and but that is done on their own time it is done after school not in the school premises and that is the responsibility of the parent it, the school doesn't take responsibility for that okay that's good to hear uh, just one thing we have just i mean just in my mind i cannot grasp how are you managing it you said there are it's an english curriculum and you have people uh, boys or girls who are from the punjabi and urdu and that isn't that very very difficult to convert them to start speaking english and you know, all because their mother it's not their mother tongue their family is not speaking that language at home it's difficult uh, in preschool it's easier because uh, because we were following the you know e y f e f c the early learning early years learning and uh, with that it's more actions and words so they could the children could actually learn through actions the vocabulary of english so it was easier to bring smaller children in onto english faster for older children we always uh, requested the parents to arrange some extra coaching at home as well because we would get children from all countries it it wasn't only limited to english we had children from spain italy norway who were only speaking that language okay. so we always requested the parents to provide some sort of english extra coaching at home so that you know children could at least come on to the system faster when you mentioned those other languages it remind me of that british show mind your language <laughs> did you ever get such a it happens occasions? there yeah. there are occasions when okay. you know children we encourage actually we encourage children to speak english all the time so when they speak english it sometimes turns out to be really funny because yeah. they are actually you know trying to say a lot of things uh, i i if i may just take a minute I remember recently there was this boy he was speaking in Urdu and I asked him he said that the the teacher sent me to get ink in Urdu okay so I told him okay say it in english he's like teacher said ink lao which my me, which means ke bring, bring ink, ink. <laughs> okay. but the only thing he said in english was teacher said Okay. in cloud so that was a good effort on his part we, yes yeah, we tried so to make them one thing english. more encourages me by what you are saying is that sense of humor was tolerated there yes yeah encouraged in fact and the school policy is basically is tolerance yeah for everyone's beliefs and um, you know backgrounds and everything also it the discouraged bias so Un, I can't say that unintentionally we might have been biased, but intentionally there was no bias at all. We were very particular. Okay, Asma, thank you very much. You, you have been so great that you gave this time and agreed for this interview. Thank you so Although much. Although we had thrown it to you as a surprise, <laughs> you were not even prepared for it. No, okay. But we wish you all the best yeah. anywhere, and of course. the first preference is if you could give some time to us sure. with this tv thing also sure okay. i would love to thank All you right. so much thank you very much thank okay asma bye